In this video, we're going to talk about the Forms Pull tool on complex shapes. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Pull tool again, but we're going to talk about it for complex shapes. So in this example, we created a spoiler and we talked about how to roll over the edge of the car, but it's pretty gradual curvature on the back. So what we're gonna talk about today is how we can use the pull tool on more complex areas. So the area that I'm thinking of here is the hood, and not that we would really design anything to go straight across the hood, but we do have a lot of areas where we've got geometry where it's bumping up and down and changing shape. So the first thing that we need to be aware of is that we need something to pull down to it. So I'm gonna start by simply creating a plane and the plane is going to just be over the hood somewhere. It doesn't really matter because we're not making a product in this case. And I'm gonna say, okay. Then I wanna move that entire body and I'm just gonna bring it up and forward. So in this case, I wanna just position it over the hood about where we're going to be making something. All right, so now that we have this here, we have to think about a handful of things. We need to think about how the pull tool works and what it means for our design. So in this first example, we're gonna start by going to Modify Pull, and note that we've got a couple of options. We've got our target selection, which can be auto or selected targets, and then we've got either our surface points or our control points. Remember that the surface points are the vertices on our smooth display, and the control points are the vertices on our box display. So when we take a look at these options, if you're trying to make something smooth that fits the shape of a mesh, you're going to want to use those surface points. So I'm going to individually select vertices and note where they go to. So again, it's going to go to an auto projected target. This is going to be the closest vertice. So in this example, those two go straight down to the hood, but where is this vertex going to go? Well, it's going to go to the shortest point. So you can see here that having our form as close as possible to the area that we want to actually attached to is gonna be important. And you'll note that if I say okay, and then I take a look at this, that obviously doesn't match the shape of the car. Now we're not getting the shape of the car because we don't have enough vertices. So what I'm gonna do is use control Z to put that back to its original size, and then I'm going to subdivide this. So we're gonna to go to modify and subdivide, and I'm just gonna add two extra faces. So now when we go to modify and pull, again, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking these down to the closest point. We have a bit more resolution here, and this one is still gonna be pulled into the fender, and you can again see that we're not really getting that division. There is a trick that we can do here. The modify insert point tool, typically we use it to insert a complete edge, but we actually have the ability to break up edges by simply clicking on them and inserting vertices. Because we have the available option to create T points, we can actually divide up an edge. Now, this does cause problems when we go to do things like insert edge, because now 100% is gonna be wherever that vertex is. So you can see we're not able to insert edges how we typically would because we broke up those bottom edges. But sometimes this can be a way to get a lower face count to match a complex shape. So let's once again try pull. And you can see now we've got these extra vertices. And because Fusion 360 allows us to have those T points, we are able to get closer to the shape without actually adding a ton of extra divisions. Once again, it's really going to depend on the shape you're trying to match. We still don't really have a good match for that shape. So what I'm gonna do is control Z, I'm gonna go back, and then at each of these points, I want to delete them and get back to my original shape. So we're gonna take that and you can see we should go back to the original shape. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna divide this up more. So I'm gonna add a ton of divisions. So we'll subdivide and instead of two, uh, I'm gonna go to one in the length faces, but in the width faces, I'm gonna go ahead and add let's just say eight. This is still not gonna get us close enough, but it'll be a little bit better. Once again, we're gonna to go to modify and pull. 
This time I'm going to box select all these bottom vertices and just see what it does. Now here is the problem that we're going to run into. Now the closest vertex or the closest position is beginning to bunch up. And so as we rotate this around, you can see that a bunch of these vertices are trying to occupy the same area. So how do we deal with this problem now that we have more divisions? This is where manually modifying your shape is going to come into play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces on the end and delete them just to make this object a little bit shorter so it's easier for us to deal with. Then I'm going to use modify and I'm going to begin pulling these closer to the surfaces where I want them to attach. Now it's still important that we stay outside of the, the mesh. Now the reason that's important is because staying outside of the mesh means that we only have one direction we can go. If we put one of these vertices inside of the mesh here, it might go up, it might go to the left, it might go to the right. It simply depends on how close it is. So we do need to still be careful and make sure that we are only moving on the outside of our mesh and not getting too close. So you can see here, this vertex is actually inside of the mesh. So I'm gonna pull that up. I'm gonna pull this one up as well. It doesn't really matter uh, if they are moving around too much because we are obviously going to pull them down to the surface. Okay, so now we're a little bit closer. Let's try pull one more time. Once again, I'm gonna to try to box select all these on the right. I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna hide the mesh. And you can see that this section here is matching a little bit better. We've got the little bump that happens in the hood, but this area over here, we still get a crease. So this tells me that I would need to do a lot more modification in order to get this to work, but we are getting closer. So once again, I'm gonna take these vertices, I'm gonna pull them down and just get it closer to the car. This one, I probably wanna bring over and a little bit closer. I am moving in plane, so everything is still staying fairly flat. This one here, I can probably move over a bit. We're never gonna get a perfect result, so the closer your initial shape matches the mesh, the better that result will be, but you will still have to go back and do some modifications afterwards. So once I'm happy with this and I'm relatively close, the last thing that I'm gonna do, because this is a very complex shape, the last thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna subdivide it one more time. So I'm gonna select everything, modify, subdivide. Once again, I don't need any more in the length faces, but I can add more in the width faces to get that higher resolution. Now, if we go back down to pull one more time, we've got a ton of vertices that we have to deal with, but you can see where they're pulling. So the green dot is where it was originally, and you can now see that this matches the hood shape pretty well. You can see that we're getting that little bump there. As we go over, you can see that it's matching that curve very nicely. So this is one of those main problems that you run into. If you are trying to match a complex shape, you're gonna end up needing a lot of resolution on your design in order to make that happen. Now, I will say one more thing about this, and that is the match tool, which allows us to take an edge of the T-spline body and match it with a sketch curve, the edge of a solid or a surface, so it doesn't technically work in the mesh section. But this match tool has a tolerance, and the tolerance is actually going to allow you to um, automatically add edges. So when we use the tolerance option, it's going to add a number of vertices in order to actually reach that. So this is not a great example because we have a mesh body and not a surface, but that is one way where you can get this without having to divide everything up. So this is, again, the general process. Everything we've looked at for the most part has been uh, fairly low res, but when you get geometry like the hood of this car, for example, you can really take a look at the spacing between the mesh elements and you can kind of get a feel for how much resolution you need in those areas. So for this design, I don't necessarily need all of these edges. We can come through uh, and we can actually use quite a bit less. So you can subdivide in just the areas you need and keep the higher resolution in the areas where you have drastic changes in curvature. So for me, that means at least deleting every other edge. And you can see that we're still matching the shape pretty well in that area. So just keep those things in mind 
when you're trying to use these tools. It's not a perfect solution. It does help, but the resolution of the mesh, the curvature you're trying to match, is really going to dictate how many divisions, how much resolution you need on your form body in order to match that shape. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.